know that feeling where your child or a teen just loses their mind over something completely insignificant and you're like, why? Why do I have to deal with this right now? Really? Really? This is the thing you're going to freak out about? Welcome to Worldly Families. I'm Justine Janae. Traveling to over 40 countries and living abroad has shown me that the mainstream American way of doing things is not always the best. I'm all about showing you new ways of being and doing so you can live and parent more intentionally and more joyfully. In this video, we'll be diving into the concept that while you may perceive your kids as disobedient, they're actually just disoriented. I'll give you some practical tips to help you help your kids feel safe and secure so their behavior improves magically. This week's video is inspired by one of my favorite books, The Soul of Discipline by Kim John Payne, M.E.D. Tip one, understand the pinging principle. Payne writes about this concept of the pinging principle. Essentially, just like dolphins use echolocation to orient themselves in the ocean, our kids use pings. They send out these bad behaviors in a sense, just to get our reaction to them so they can orient themselves in the world. This call and response between the child's behavior and the adult's reaction is like a navigational system for them. Understanding the challenging behaviors in this way will help you see your children as calling for help or for guidance as opposed to just trying to push your buttons. Payne says, when children are at their worst, we need to be at our best. I couldn't agree more. Tip two, understand your child's temperament. Payne lists four different types of temperaments. There are two extroverted and two introverted types. One of the extroverted types is called the leader type. They can become dominant and controlling when they're stressed. The second extrovert type is called the creative type. They can become hysterical and unfocused under stress. One of the introverted types is called the easygoing type they can actually become stubborn and rigid under stress. The other introverted type is called the intuitive type. They can become overly sensitive and feel victimized under stress. When your sweet little one starts to behave in some of these more extreme ways, reflect for a minute. Sometimes this is caused by a big life change, like a change in schools or a global pandemic, for example. <laughs> But other times, it's a slow buildup of a lot of things over time. And that crayon that you gave them that was not the right color or depending on the age range, whatever the equivalent may be, that tiny insignificant thing that happens is usually just a straw. It's the straw that broke the camel's back. So what else is your little camel carrying? Tip three chisel away at behaviors that don't belong. Payne writes about this famous analogy that Michelangelo, when asked how he possibly carved the statue of David out of this huge chunk of marble, Michelangelo said he simply released David from the marble. David was in the marble the whole time. Payne suggests that we see our children this same way. And when we're redirecting their behavior, we're just chipping away, chiseling away at those things that are not in line with our family values. Notice the little things because the little things matter. And I don't mean be a helicopter parent and correct every little thing that your child does if they're trying to figure out how to wash the dishes. Let them figure it out, even if it's not perfect. What I mean is the little things that go against your family values. That is the most important thing. So if you catch one child saying something disrespectful or unkind to their sibling, for example, nip that in the butt, catch that right then and there, and don't say, don't say that. Explain why this is not in line with our family values of respect or kindness, for example. Or if they're old enough and it's developmentally appropriate, ask them which values, which family values that that violates. Tip four. Simplify your lives. This gets to the heart of simplicity parenting. It's basically the idea that the modern American child is so overwhelmed with extracurriculars and activities and enrichment that they have no time to just decompress, to just relax, to just breathe, to be bored. 
Children don't know how to be bored these days because they're constantly shuttled from one activity to the other. And it really stresses them out. And I know this is hard. It's a constant balance in our family because our daughter, Autumn, loves everything. She loves sports. She loves art. She loves music. She loves being social with her friends. So she's always wanting to do things. But we know that we need to allow her this time to just play because that is a child's job is to play. So do the best you can to balance it. Pick maybe one or two activities and leave the rest of the days free after school. Tip five, plan decompression points. Allow your child decompression points throughout the day. When they get home from school, schedule a time. Okay, when Autumn gets home from school, first thing she does is puts away her backpack and unpacks her lunch. After that, she and I play. We just have one-on-one -on -one time playing. She fills up her mommy love tank. After we play together, Autumn has a little bit of alone time by herself. This is really the only time in the day when she's alone with her thoughts. And it's very important for her. Then we all come together, we cook dinner together, we eat together, we clean up together, and it's bedtime routine. Then we have another decompression point right before bed when we're just snuggling, we maybe read a book, but then we put the book away and we're just present with each other. Tip six, shield your child from adult content. It's very important for children to be allowed to be children. If you think back to hundreds of years ago when we weren't so uber connected to everything, children didn't know about things that were going on in the world. Nowadays, children are bombarded with news and the stressful conversations that the parents have at dinner. You'd be amazed at how much children pick up on even when you don't think they're listening. Even with the age filters that they have on apps like YouTube Kids, if you let your kids watch that, a lot of that content is still dramatically age inappropriate. Things are over sexualized or there's lots of violence and aggressive behavior or even the way that the media portrays teenagers and the attitude that they have toward parents. Adolescence is not really a concept in other cultures the way it is in the US where there's this period where everyone's expected to back talk and have an attitude. The reason it's bad for your kids to see this age inappropriate content or to hear you talking about it is because it moves their thought processes from the frontal lobe to the amygdala. Essentially, it puts them in a fight or flight response. They start producing cortisol, they get stressed out, and the world seems like a scary, unsafe place. When we shield our kids from this age inappropriate content and these adult conversations, it allows them to relax. They move out of that fight or flight response and into the frontal lobe where they can make better decisions and their behavior naturally improves. Especially in the first seven years, allow your children to see the world as a friendly, predictable, safe place. If you like my vibe and my content, please subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. I hope these tips help you to reorient your thinking about your child's disobedience and learn to look under the surface at what's really going on. Simplify your whole family's life and you will have a much more harmonious time together. I'll see you in the next video.